Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, if you're new here, I'm Cheryl. I know I've been quite MIA recently, but you know, life gets in the way. Today's video is just a little bit different than normal. Um, today I'm going to be speaking about my journey and my diagnosis with cancer. Um, so the point of this video is to really kind of raise awareness um, of the type of cancer that I was diagnosed with and help people that maybe have lumps and bumps that they don't know about. And you're probably going to get a lot of the cat in the background. <laughs> this is Frank. Um, so yeah, let's dive right in. Grab yourself a cuppa. I've got a cup of coffee here and let's dive right in. So first and foremost, my diagnosis. So I was diagnosed officially on the 1st of May 2014. So just going on six years, that's pretty crazy to be fair. Um, if you also see me looking down quite a lot, I've got all my kind of story here and my facts about the type of cancer I was diagnosed with. So I was diagnosed with, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're so funny. Right, lie down. God, they say never work with animals, don't they? Right, lie down. Come on. So I was diagnosed with sarcoma in my foot, believe it or not. I know cancer in foot, people are always like, what, in your foot? So yeah, I was diagnosed with a soft tissue sarcoma. Um, so I've got some facts here kind of about sarcoma and what it is. I didn't know what it was when I was told, never have heard of the cancer. Either. Sarcoma makes up 1.3% of all cancer diagnoses in the UK. So it's actually quite a rare um, cancer. You do have, um, you do have around 100 different subtypes of sarcoma. Um, and 7 in 10 sarcomas in the UK diagnosed are soft tissue sarcoma, which is what I had. Um, you do have bone sarcoma and GERT, I think it's called. I'll put that, I'll put that down below because I can't really remember. I'll leave the link to the sarcoma website down below. This is where I've got all my facts from. Um, this, the survival rate where I am at the moment, because I'm now past my five year stage, yay, um, is 55% of people living with sarcoma. So obviously I'm in a very high kind of rate, um, which I'm very grateful and very thankful for, obviously. Um, yeah, so how did the diagnosis come about? So when I was 15, I'm now 31, so when I was 15, I fell off a curb and hurt my foot, uh, as you'd probably suspect, and never really thought kind of anything of it. Um, we'll hope it would just clear up and heal as normal. Got to a point where I was dancing for a dan local dance school and it kind of started to affect that and it also kind of started to affect the way that I walked. Now, I'm not saying that the, the falling off the curb started the cancer. However, sometimes they can say that a trauma can bring out the cancer that was already there. So that's kind of what I believe it, it happened. Um, no symptoms before that. No unwell, nothing. Typical teenager, really. Um, and... Yeah, in the coming years, it, it started as a kind of size of like a two pence piece, I would say. Kind of started about that size and the inside of my foot. Um, and over the kind of next 10 years, believe it or not, it grew to the size of a tennis ball. Now, I will try and insert some photos here if I can. I'm not the best when it comes to video editing, but I'll try my best. Um, and yeah, this was this the, the photo that I'm showing, or will hopefully be showing, is what it ended up like. Now I'm hearing people saying like, why did you not go before that? Like, why did you not let it, why did you let it get to that stage? 
I actually had been to the doctor so many times, so many times, on and on and on at the doctor, kind of about this lump. And I was told each time that it was just torn ligaments and that it would, it would heal, it would heal. Obviously it never healed and the kind of older I got, I got so fed up with going to the doctors. I thought, well, this is kind of it now, I'll just, I'll just deal with it, I'll just get on with it learn to adapt really is what what I've done. Um, kind of fast forward a few years and I met my now husband who I kind of hid it from where I could because I was quite embarrassed by the lump and I don't know, I was quite very self-conscious um, of it. Also because the way I was walking as well, it was, it was painful if I hurt it off, if I hit it off a, an edge or anything then I, I, would, I would be crippled. So he eventually one day he'd said to me, what's the lump on your foot? And I was just like, oh, it's just um, torn ligaments, torn ligaments, because that's what I'd been told, obviously. And he'd said, I am no doctor, but that is not torn ligaments. So that made me think, okay, right, let's go back to the doctor. So we went back to the doctor, but in the process, I had changed my doctor, which was the best thing i ever done. Don't get me wrong, NHS is fantastic, and we all know that, especially at this time. Sometimes it feels like you're hitting your head off a brick wall when you know there's something wrong, but the doctor's telling you different. So I went to my other doctor, who was my mum's doctor as well, and straight away she kind of said, I don't know what it is, but I don't think it's anything for you to worry about. So I was like, that's fantastic. Bearing in mind, during all this, not once did I ever think cancer, ever. Just because of where it's positioned in the foot, never heard of it. And because it had grown so big, I thought surely my body would have had some symptoms kind of by now. So every doctor I kind of went to see after that was saying, I'm sure it's just like a cyst or a benign cyst, etc. So I went to the hospital for an x-ray. Um, x-ray didn't show anything, which now I understand it wouldn't. Um, and he was just as baffled, but had said the same thing. I'm sure it's just a benign cyst. So left there, I was like, that's fine. Um, then I was... Um, referred for an MRI, which again didn't show anything. Um, and then after that, I was referred for a biopsy of the lump. Now, this was probably the worst thing I have ever gone through. Don't get me wrong; I don't have children, so I, I don't I don't know what what childbirth is like. But this was the most pain I'd ever experienced ever. So basically, the lump where it was was sitting on a nerve, hence, hence the pain. Um, and what they had to do was go into the lump, scrape out the cells. So yeah, it, it was unbearable, but it was done. Um, and that eventually kind of led to my diagnosis. So got a phone call to see to come into the hospital. And this was Glasgow Royal Infirmary. And at that point, I didn't, I really didn't think anything of it. Actually, I said to my husband, don't bother coming because it's just results. So I'm sure it'll just be kind of what the next roads of treatment are. Thank goodness he did come. He actually insisted that he would come. We were sitting in the consultation room, um, actually just joking around, talking about buying tickets to Prince. Like, never thought anything of it. I never thought about how my life was going to completely flip 180 and completely change in that next 10 minutes. The doctor came in, um, lovely guy, but deadpan as doctors are, and basically said that the news wasn't good, that it was sarcoma. But to me, sarco that, that was jargon, that, that was... As I said at the beginning, never heard of sarcoma. So my husband actually asked, does that mean it's cancerous? And he said, yes. And for me at that point, it was like somebody had punched me in the face. Just punched me, 
I was like, like the shock as anyone or anyone even watching this will know that the initial diagnosis is the possibly the worst feeling that you could ever ever ex experience um everything kind of went what's the word I'm looking for everything kind of went numb my whole body went numb and I just cried cried and cried and cried until I actually couldn't stop crying so um the doctor kind of left us for a minute and came back in. When he came back in, he brought in a orthopedic surgeon. So bearing in mind, this was on my foot. So he brought in an orthopedic surgeon, Mr. Mahendra, who then gave me the news that it would probably most likely be an amputation to save my life. Um, so to be told that a, I had cancer, and B, I was probably going to need an amputation, was uh, horrific, absolutely horrific. Mr Mahendra was amazing, though he said my main goal is to save your life, which looking back, I, I understand that, but at, at that time, my goodness, it was an, another kind of punch to the face. <laughs> I'd say once I got my head around it, but I, I, I really didn't at that point. All I wanted was to leave the room and just leave the hospital. It was so, the word I can use was like, it was like having claustrophobia. I felt so suffocated in that room to be told all this stuff. And it was it was just unbelievably overwhelming. Um, I was told there was a possibility of it having already spread in my body. Um, and obviously because it was soft tissue, the most common place for it to spread to would have been my lungs. So in the midst of this, I was also being told that I would be referred for a CT scan to ensure that there was hopefully no spread at this point. Now, as you can imagine, walking out of that hospital, I, 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 to me now, it's still even a blur. Um, it was just me and my husband that had went for the results, so then I had to call my mum. Again, I, I couldn't tell you what I said. Total blur. Total blur. Um, told my best friends, and then I had to go into my work and tell them. And then kind of everything from then on was a total blur. I don't really remember the rest of that day. Um, yeah, I just knew that life as it was, was going to change completely. Um, I'd only met Dave, who's my husband, um, just, I think, just about a year, a year and a bit before that. So obviously we were still quite in the the new phase, the honeymoon phase, as they call it. Um, and I'd said to him at one point after this initial diagnosis that he could go, he could leave, like I wouldn't judge him for it because obviously what I was about to go through was life-changing, completely life-changing, and he never blinked once and said, why would I leave? Like, doesn't matter, we go through this together. Which we have done, we have done, it's, it's, it's been testing. Um, but I think we'll leave that for an, a kind of another video, if you fancy that, if you fancy me doing like a Q&A with my husband to see how he dealt with things and if you get any questions then just let me know um in the comments below and I'm, I'm more than happy to do that don't know if you'll be mind you but you just need to, to kind of get in and bear it that's marriage isn't it so after the, the initial shock um i felt that i had to kind of deal with this head on try and be positive and understand that life does go on regardless um so i went for my ct scan and that was fine actually that was that was okay um and then we got the results on ct scan which we were told there was no spread for me i mean i felt like i could have won the lottery that day to be told that there was no spread of cancer yeah, I have cancer, but there was no spread in my body. It was just like I had won the lottery. 
in the same breath, the, do the doctor had told me though that it definitely will be an amputation to help me obviously survive this sarcoma. To me though, that was a positive, which I know might sound crazy, um, but to be told there was no spread through your body and that actually you'd be losing a part of your limb. Yeah, obviously it was tough to deal with. However, if it was going to save my life, then that's the way I've had to look at this and that's the way that I still look at this to this day. That is probably one of my coping mechanisms to get through life is to realise that having this amputation and that I'm now an amputee actually saved my life kind of in the process. So we did talk about the options of going to try to remove the the tumour itself. Um, wasn't feasible. I would have been left with a foot that didn't work. And, and to me, what was the point in that? Um, also, if they went in and maybe disturbed the tumour, there was a possibility that it could then spread throughout. The cells could then spread throughout. For me, that, that was not even not even something to think about. To me, I looked at it as a positive and realised that actually being an amputee isn't the end of the world. It really isn't. Now you look at things like the Paralympics and the things that people can do now um, as an amputee. It is amazing. Absolutely amazing. And inspires me daily. I'm actually on a forum called Finding Your Feet. If there's any amputees that are watching this, um, go onto Facebook and find Finding Your Feet. They're amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, they kind of keep you going throughout it all. It's not easy. It's not an easy process. But again, I'm going to save that journey for another another video. Um, this was more kind of about the cancer diagnosis and how I've dealt with that. Um, after that, after the CT scan and to be told it was an amputation, life just went on until they'd phoned me to say there was a date for the amputation. So I just went back to work. At that point, I was a full-time manager um, and I just got on with it. I just day to day got on with it. And then one, I think it was a Friday. Yeah, it was a Friday evening. Or was that Wednesday? I can't remember. I got a phone call in June to see that we have a space for next, this was the Friday after, um, for your operation. So to me, that's kind of when shit hit the fan. That's when it was like, right, this is actually quite real. Um, I think I'd been living in a kind of bubble before then. Um, and this for me was like, God, this is actually happening. Believe it or not, my amputation fell on Friday the 13th, which ironically is unlucky for some, but for me, it wasn't. Um, the morning of, I had my family, so I had my husband, my sister, my mum, my stepdad. They all came to the hospital with me and I got all marked up. It's quite funny because they do kind of mark the right leg, hopefully. So I made sure that it was the right leg that they marked before they started uh, doing the amputation. Um, came out of the amputation, I was down there, for, I think it was about five hours. Um, came out of the amputation and obviously was in and out consciousness etc um, my husband had spoken to the surgeon who said it went amazingly well and that there was no cancerous cells that he'd seen in the remaining limb which was amazing so I'm actually a right below knee amputee so that's me um, after that, after that kind of process, there, for me, luckily there was no chemotherapy and there was no radiotherapy. Um, I have to had to go for a, at that point monthly checkups, so I had to go for chest X-rays. I'll never forget the first time I went for my first checkup, and to me, I thought it was going to be on my residing limb because that's where the surgery was and I went into the x-ray changing area and she was like take everything off from the waist up I was like sorry I, you didn't realize it's it's my leg turns out that you have to get a chest x-ray on your lungs to make sure that it's not came back in your lungs to me it's quite it's quite a funny story nowadays that I can tell everybody 
Um, yeah, got my monthly checkups, then they reduced to three monthly, then six monthly, and now it's yearly because I'm past the five year stage. Which, if you'd asked me that this time five years ago, if I thought I would be where I am right now, probably not, to be fair. Everyone always says that, yeah, I'm positive and like you don't let it get to you and oh you're so inspiring and to me inspiring is not a word that i associate with myself at all not what not one bit um before this i was probably quite i don't want to say pessimistic i want to say quite realist now i try and see the positives and everything which pff, hasn't been easy hasn't been easy and believe me there are days where i still think why me why did I have to go through all this? Why has my life changed so dramatically? Um, but on the other hand, I think, actually, I got through this. I got through it. And yeah, life hasn't been easy. There have been many struggles in the last kind of six years now. And having my husband and my family and my friends has saved me completely. Um, I count, I count my blessings every day that I'm still here, still able to walk around, albeit with help, like a walking stick. That's that's okay. I, I don't feel ashamed about that, and no one should ever feel ashamed about their own disabilities or having to ask for help when they maybe need it. Um. Yeah, life can be rough for everybody, especially the kind of the situation we're in at the moment. Trying to keep motivated and trying to keep positive it isn't easy. There are small things that I've helped to cope with. Um, there are small things that I've used to help me cope. And it's small things like YouTube, believe it or not. Um, learning how to do makeup and kind of taking my mind off things for a while. I was off sick for a year. And a year at home in a wheelchair wasn't easy, really wasn't. Um, we actually had to move house and that was a big upheaval. As you know, stressors like moving house is a big thing. Um, but yeah, then I eventually got up and on my feet and obviously on my prosthetic limb. And we went to Vegas and we got married, which was amazing. Um, and daily now... It, it, it has changed me. The diagnosis has changed me as a person. But I think for me, it's probably changed me in a way, in a better way than what I thought I would. It, than I thought it would, sorry. Um, yeah, life now is different. I am an amputee. I have a disability. Um, but I don't let it stop me from doing anything that I want to do. Never would I let it stop me. Even if there's things in life that maybe I think I can't do, I always try them. And my husband's my biggest supporter. He'll always say, just try it. If it doesn't work, then that's okay. And that even comes to things like this, like YouTube. Um, this, the reason for me telling my story, my diagnosis is just to help others that are maybe in the same boat who have maybe not heard of sarcoma or who have a lump that they're worried about and the doctor is kind of not doing anything, not referring you, fight for your corner, fight for what you think is, is right. It's your body and you know the symptoms. Um, it's Sarcoma is very common in arms and uh, your legs and also in your stomach as well. Um, it's also quite common in younger people, so in um, children and teenagers it's quite common also. Um, but I will link the sarcoma website as I said down below because it is amazing all the facts are on it. So yeah, if anyone's any questions or wants to maybe reach out to me, you can follow me on Instagram as well, which actually a few people have reached out to me on Instagram. Um, I'll just leave the link for that down below as well um, or you can just leave comments down below and I'll try my best to answer them. I hope that you have enjoyed this the, the kind of video that I've done. I know it's quite different and I know things are a bit doom and gloom at the moment um, but I just want people to know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. 
cancer diagnosis now doesn't mean that life is over at that point. It, it isn't. Um, we are very f fortunate to have the NHS um, and to have the help that we, and support that we can get access to. Also, things like support groups are really helpful. Um, or even, as I said, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, anything like that in the, this day and age is very helpful. Helpful for oh, anything in this day and age is very helpful. Oh, why can I not speak? Anything like that is very helpful to anyone because then they know that they're not alone in this this kind of home situation. Um. I always kind of wind my husband up now. I'm quite of a prankster. So I'll tell you one that I've done. So he helps me put on my shoes in the morning. It was for work or whatever. And when I first kind of had my amputation and started to put shoes on, he tied the, the left one, which was is my functioning foot. And then went to tie the right one and I screamed that it was too sore. And he was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Obviously it wasn't because my, my limb is artificial and I can't feel it. Um, I will do a video on being an amputee, the challenges that you face when you're an amputee um, and anything that you maybe have question wise, I'll fit into that um, video as well. We're on lockdown just now so if I can do some educational videos to help people out then I'm more than happy to do so. So yeah, that's my cancer journey. It will officially be six years in May that I have been diagnosed and I still get yearly checkups and that will continue until the 10th year. And then I am officially, hopefully at that point, cancer free. So yep, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. And don't forget that life is worth having.